Hello and peace be with you. Welcome to our dignified dialogue called Humankind Both, Humanity and Kindness, Exploring the Middle Path. I'm Zahir Manan. I'm going to play the part of a facilitator um, as well as be part of the conversation. Um, I'm going to go towards my right, ask you to introduce yourself. My name is uh, Mike Brunges. I am a minister in the Presbyterian Church in America and a church planter. My name is Dan O'Donnell and uh, I'm a semi-retired uh, statistician. Uh, two years ago I started a not-for-profit called Better Society by Socrates, acronym BS, BS, <laughs> or BS squared. And, and so that's what I am now two years into. Thank you very much. My name is Tom Grimshaw, and uh, I'm retired. Um, I never expected to, to live this long. Everybody in my family uh, died well before 60. Uh, I have a triple bypass, a stent, and a new heart valve uh, about a year and a half ago, so I'm the bionic man. Uh, I have a very uh, often changing viewpoint, and, uh, and I'm right now uh, really uh, examining Islam from all angles. Kathleen, I am a member of the Baha'i Faith Religion. I uh, am a Connecticut native, born and raised here, quite by accident. I'm here today um, having discussions yesterday. My name is Zakir Manan again. I'm from the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, who are Muslims that believe the Messiah has come again um, in the person of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad from Qadia in India. And our center is in Meriden, called Baitul Aman Mosque, the House of Peace Mosque. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Um, we just introduced ourselves, got to know each other. This is the first time we met each other. Um, now we're going to open it up. Um, and have a platform for dialogue and conversation about um, basically the overarching uh, uh, um, idea is where the world is headed and the condition of the world today um, and how we can uh, continue the conversation that we're having today or break those barriers and having people that don't know each other meet and talk to each other. Um, one of the most prevailing things today is Googling everything but better thing to do is meet people face to face. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any thoughts or ideas about this? I think I agree because um, it's fun and interesting to Google. I, I have some in investigative background mm -hmm. having been a reporter in the past. Mm -hmm. It can be addicting. We're not meant to be sitting and taking a whole lot of time mm -hmm. in front of a computer. We have to interact, and there are things to do. Yeah, I think the more we connect through the media, the less we're connecting with people. Uh, there was a great cartoon and uh, in the paper the other day, and, it's, and the, the question was asked, uh, as we become more connected via the electronics, we become so less connected that we're meeting we're giving the definition of somebody that's living in solitary confinement mm -hmm. because they're alone. Mm -hmm. They're not interacting. And, and we probably uh, got the same message in global arts that communication takes place uh, facially mm -hmm. as much as through verbal. And there's and there's that missing. Yeah, I've that read and I've studied that 90% uh, of communication right. is body language right it's their facial expressions it's it's you mm -hmm. and I grew up with the same education in that in that essence. yeah I was I was gonna you know just just say that my memories you know we're the last generation you know I'm 72 years old you're young so <laughs> you know televisions when I was 10 years old that was a key age for mm -hmm. me but I remember when this first little television came in but up to that point, you know, dinner time was just sacrosanct. You know, mm -hmm. you, right. the, mm -hmm. the whole family would, would discuss problems. We would yeah. read the local newspaper. We would see what was happening. And then, you know, we even had Time Life books. I remember Time Life books were huge. You know, right. they only came like once a month. But we were continually talking at the, at the, at the dinner tables, uh, especially. 
and and now you know it just to me it's really horrifying that you know eight hours a day you know families are watching the, the, the television when they came in to me it was sales what, what was it the cartoon Andy you know little Abner right oh and remember the, you know the vacuum cleaner salesman would try to come and you know right. he push his foot through the door and he'd try to sell you something and so the automatic response to sales was to slam the door you know you 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 know prided your your family mm -hmm. uh, intimacy and now you physic you have hundreds and hundreds of salesmen in the house if you're watching commercial mm -hmm. advertising they're totally distracting and uh, you know you, you was well, that only to me it's horrifying I think you know we've tended to uh, disconnect ideas from people and it's easy for me to hear an idea that's different from mine and vilify it but why and the vilification? See, because that's what's right. happened in but the world. But when I sit down with a, with a person, with a human being, right. with another man that has children similar to my children's age, and I can see, you know, this isn't just an idea that I'm disagreeing with. There's, there's another person here. We would sit down, I bet we would disagree on a whole host of different issues. But at the end of the day, we're, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. And as divergent as our ideas are, our hum we, we have a shared humanity. Mm -hmm. And so to me... I think as we start talking about Googling or whatever, you know, we have we have more information at our fingertips than we've ever had, but yet we've, we're, we're more isolated. And than I we've think ever that's been. what's right. causing all of this, a lot of this divide in the world, yeah. because what we're doing electronically is we're bringing the world together that's never been together, and in, and the communication is now instant. And so, if you disagree with somebody in Australia or India or Pakistan or any place. You can do it now, yeah. and, so then, then and, and, those, it's e and it's easier to do it because you don't you see do a face behind that person's go. name. This way, when you sit together, we even if we might agree ideologically or even on religious dogma, we can still be friends. Right. We can still sit down for coffee, and this is why the idea of sitting down for coffee, cake, and conversation—we call it coffee, cake, and true Islam. And we do it twice a week. You know, I sit down with rabbis and priests. Now, is it coffee cake days. or coffee and cake? Both. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's it's actually all three. All three. Wow. You know, that's why I say free I'm coffee, there. free wow. cake, and free conversation. It's yeah. not yeah. healthy food, though. <laughs> <Right. Okay. laughs> it can be healthy food. So, you know, once a week we do it in Panera. Once a week we do it at our mosque. And we do it in an outside setting for people to feel comfortable, mm -hmm. less... Um, kind of like fists up and like where am I going a Panera Bread is kind of a neutral lo location then we have it in our mosque come and see us where we are because many people don't know about Muslims you were mentioning about sales even press and media are all about selling the idea of what they're reporting on and one of the major ideas is that Islam is an enemy to the United States or Islam is violent Muslims are extremists and they and they cover that much more than they cover other things so that's where the idea comes that come and meet a person uh, a Muslim in person and try to bridge that divide and Muslim is just terminology and I, you know I, I think a, an important question to ask is why when you mix humanity with all the information we have why does it go so sideways why isn't it making us better? If I can Google and get more information about Islam than I ever could before, why? Why? If I can answer, you know, my well, actually, I won't answer my own question. That I'll, I'll ask that question, and then I do have well, you might be a, a suspected answer, but uh, Noam Chomsky. Did, you know, I've really just gotten I've just gotten interested in Noam Chomsky. You know, he's he's known, you know, in academia mm. and. and uh, you know, activism, you know, as maybe the greatest living philosopher. But anyway, he's written a book, and then the people follow him. But that's exactly his question, his philosophical question is, why do we now, with so much more knowledge, mm -hmm. understand it less? You know, it's an information... I think it's a lack, lack of wisdom. No, it's overload, too. It's overload, yeah. that's my point. It's yeah. overload. That's the word to describe it. There is so much information becoming available now that, and this I still have trouble believing, but they said every four weeks there is more data brought forth than in its previous history. So every four weeks there is more information, more data, more put on electronically. But do you think it's just a, a, a capacity for understanding? I mean, I, I would almost diagnose it as a spiritual condition. And, and what I mean by that is that... Um, 
I, you know, I think if, if we talked about all our different religious viewpoints, I think to some degree we're all talking about how to make our way in the world in relationship to God and others. I think one of the fundamental problems of the human condition is that there's this desire to, uh, I would say, validate ourselves, um, to use a religious term, maybe justify ourselves. So we take this information, and now I can see it as a way to get a leg up on mm -hmm. another person. Yeah. And, and I would, you know, so as, a, as a, a minister, you know, I would say, well, if, we, if we're validated by God and accepted by God, then I don't necessarily have to um, validate myself at your expense or your expense or, or your expense. And I think as, 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 as we move away from Do you believe God, that all the other religions are as valid as Christianity? See, that's, <laughs> it's an interesting question. And... It depends. I, I would valid. I don't know that that's the the word I want to use. Okay. So obviously, I believe that Christianity is the true religion, right? I think that this is true, and this is the way to God. Okay. But that's let me the, ask you this, sir, just just to get the full yeah. part out here. I'm trying to get. If you believe it's the true religion, mm -hmm. does that mean the others are false? I believe that anything anybody from another religion says is false. I think if something's true, it's true because God says that it's true, and Christians, you don't have to be a Christian to know true things. So um, I don't need to go to a Christian doctor, per se, to be diagnosed properly and correctly. Um, but I think we're doing a disservice to all religions if we say that there's not things that one religion says is true and another says is true that are mutually exclusive. Like I think to have a true dialogue like we're having, we have to have the freedom to say, I believe one thing's true, so I can't believe mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this is true. But, th but there is a golden rule, there is a golden rule that was mentioned that pervades all religions, and that is to have a relationship with God, the Creator, whatever you call it, Allah, Elohim. Father, whatever you call that, the Creator, to have a relationship with Him, to acknowledge that, and then also to have a relationship with the creation of that Creator. Mm -hmm. So not only human beings, but everything that He has created. I mean, look at the way the world is today. You know, we're thirsty and hungry for knowledge, but we don't know how to um, we don't how to en know how to enact it or know how to um, put it into practice uh, to build bridges. You know, and and that's the thing is that we we are all part of the same creation. We're we're, we're at least part of the same species. Yeah. You know, and yet we are the most destructive on the face of the earth compared to the animals, compared to the plants, compared to the sea creatures. We are the most destructive. So with knowledge comes responsibility. So why why do you think that is? I think that is because of two reasons. God, uh, our Quran says, and this is also pervading in other religions, is that there was a creator that decided to create um, and create something that will mirror its own image and its own freedoms, right? Um, so everything is relative, right? If nothing else exists, you want to be able to create something for them to recognize that and to have relativity. When you created that and then you create intelligent beings and not just us, you know, the Quran says there are extraterrestrials, there are aliens even to this day. Um, and we will meet them one day, but even as human beings, God created us to be like God. That's why there's um, He sent prophets and messengers and chosen elect and uh, metaphorical sons of God and things like that to show us a way, to show us the way, and to uh, show us that human beings can do it. You know, and that you as a human being can do this. That's why in Islam we don't believe Jesus to be divine. He was a human being. Um, and he was born of a mother. It's, uh, in science, it's called parthenogenesis, to be born without a human father. Um, the lizards do this, and there have been other cases, but it was a sign for the children of Israel. But if he was divine, then how can we ever follow him or be like him? We would always say, well, we're human, we have weaknesses, we can't be Christ-like. But on the other hand, Jesus fasted, he prayed, um, he had followings, he talked to his people in circles like this. The same way that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did the same way Socrates uh, did to his people was in person. So one thing is that you know people back in the day used to say, "Don't shove your face in a book," but 
you, you want to uh, uh, be moderate and you want to balance everything out. Yes, get education through knowledge, through books, through the media and the internet that's there, but then counterbalance it by meeting those people. Meet people that you're not comfortable with and see your common grounds. We're always competitive. That's the major thing is that people want greed, money, and power. And that's where the world wars have led us to. And so if we um, see how we can work together and not be like my button is bigger than yours or my sword is bigger than yours, um, we can come to an understanding that we actually believe the same thing. We just call it different things. I think that it's within our nature to be competitive, but we should use that for goodness. Be competitive in goodness not in unrighteousness and things that are destructive. And, and I worked in a preschool. This is the same lesson we teach our three to five year olds. And their brain development is done, 90% done by the age of five. You can use that same uh, argument and that same battle in the world. A classroom is like a little world. So why can't we use the same thing in our society? What do you see? There is a big imbalance in the world. Of that imbalance is the fact that there well, there are more women leaders, but uh, generally a woman, especially coming from a spiritual background, mm. is not going to want her children to go off to war and come back in coffins. Thank you. That's why Baha'is, I know, we see um, that in the future there will be the lesser peace in which the nations will lay down their weapons. And then there will eventually come the greater peace, which I have to read up more on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, so, and and um, is that before or after another world that uh, another world war that we have to face that we're headed toward? We might have to go through hell before you know the world may have to before you know we really catch on to this and realize. We can't always have a bomb at our disposal and guns on the street. All these police who are shooting down unarmed black mm. men and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not just so much as the biasness, the, the racism, which is unconscious. It's just that you got a weapon in your hand. Mm. That's, that's what it is. But I, I think your description of humanity is... I don't know if, if I'm summarizing, so if I'm inaccurate, correct me. Fundamentally competitive. You know, we, we have this competitiveness uh, to it. And, you know, th this is where, in my kind of interaction with, with faith and things like that, I, I, I think that, you know, just as we said, w there's all this new data, right? All this, all this information's at our fingertips. I think sometimes we believe that what's going to overcome our competitiveness and you know, I'm not talking about competitiveness in a good way. I'm talking about that you and I can't be right, both right. So I have to put you down for me because exactly. I'm be right because That's I'm the right. The mentality. Yeah, and I guess I would say I don't think it's just the acquisition of information that will overcome my competitiveness, whether it's um, religious information or uh, scientific in, or, or scientific or I'm concerned about. right. And so I yeah, think like global warming. When we talk about our you know, faith, exactly. faith perspective, right? As as I see, how does how does humanity overcome competitive mm -hmm. and all these things? It has to be something, not information that assimilates into me as a person, but something totally other than me, right? And that's that's where we talk about you know um, God having to intervene, and this is where you know you mentioned uh, Jesus, where so we say, yeah, if he you know we, he couldn't you know his humanity and his you know so we would talk about a human nature and a divine nature coexisting because there has to be um, an intervent there has to be an outside intervention. It's not just here's your information assimilated into your mind and your prejudices and your competitive condition and use that to overcome your competitiveness. But actually you have to have your competitiveness uh, subdued by what I would say by a God who is outside of you. I would disagree. Well, you know, even Jesus said that. He said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Many people were called children of God. David in the Psalms is called the begotten son of God. Israel is called the firstborn of God. Moses himself is called God to Pharaoh. Not even the son of God, but God himself. The point is that we can imbibe that divinity. That the whole point of a religion is to unify with God, 
just the same way that Jesus was, Moses was, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was. And they came not for themselves to be glorified. They came for us to be like them, to show, to show us that we can be like them. That intervention has been going on through from Adam to Noah to Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Socrates, and everybody in the middle, and then to Baha'i, uh, Baha'u'llah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, you know, the leaders that we have today. The thing is that God is testing us. You know, God says, uh, and, 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 and we can see this, but even if you don't believe in God, you can come together on the foundation of justice. Justice is a main foundation. On top of that is doing good things, just doing righteousness. Then on top of that is finally treating each other, recognizing that we're all from the same human family. Scientifically, we can all be traced back to one African woman that came over a million years ago. Religiously, we can all be traced, we say that we're the children of Adam and Eve. What is our excuse for coming together and goodness we have to find that we have to overcome that internal battle that we call jihad right um and that's where when we come together like this a lot of barriers are broken i didn't know much about the baha'i faith i didn't know much about um even uh, socrates even though i believe in him that when we come together um then it's a paradigm for others to see that oh these guys are sitting with people that are very different from them and they're not shooting at their mosque, they're not killing each other, but they're talking about how they can agree to disagree and also agree on the things that we have in common. I, I disagree with both of you, in a way. My theory for me, and it's not for anybody else, is that we are the last species on this earth. When you look at the age of the universe, which we now finally think we have a pretty good idea of how old it is, we're the last species to arrive. And it was it was just a nanosecond ago, considering the whole length of the time of the universe. And when we came on this earth, we were weak. They they have got human skulls with punch marks where uh, cat, big cats got them and killed them. So you had to be aggressive. You had to be competitive. You wanted that person that was ahead of your little group called a tribe to be an SOB and ask questions later if you're to survive. The genetics show today that we are so interbred mm -hmm. that the entire human species is more interbred than a troop of chimpanzees that have been in Africa located in the, in the same, same location. That's what the genetics shows. It shows we came from probably less than 500 people. The differences that we have, visually. Yeah, I've read those same books. You know, they're very interesting books about the out of Africa theory. Right. About fifty thousand years ago. And there was a couple uh, pinch points. Well, there's one the million Africans. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the birthplace. That's the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. But I've read as few as two hundred, two hundred to three hundred left what's now Ethiopia. Right. And migrated along the south shore of India. And from those few hundred, everything uh, from the other six billion, right. we're now up to seven or eight billion people, mm. and you know that's kind of what you s you know you began talking about uh, us as a species, mm -hmm. and uh, we're a family. So yeah, but even you know, even from time immemorial, you read the story of Jacob and his sons. It was Joseph's own brother that threw him down the well. It was Prophet Muhammad's own uncles that were his worst enemies. It was Jesus' own fellow Jewish people that were his worst enemies. And it, one of his disciples handed him over. It's the people that are closest to you that always betray you. So the thing is that these are natural urges and things that we should harness for a good thing. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad said that everybody has Satan running in their blood. Well, I, I think Tom might be getting also at what you know I sh am very close to thinking that we are not only, we, we concentrate on competitiveness within our human species, but we are, you know, if you think about it from a little higher level, uh, looking down on Earth like, you know, we did from the moon, we are at war with nature. We arose from nature, from the Garden of Eden. And, uh, you know, I, I found it interesting because Noam Chomsky, just referred to this in one of his talks, the geologists who have a sense for, you know, the, mo the most 
antiquity mm. have now defined a new geologic age, you know, like the mm -hmm. Triassic, yes. Jurassic, yes. etc. Right. So have you heard? Yeah. 1945, they have determined and are now naming that period for the next thousands of years as the anthro. Well, I, I forget the name. But anthro. It, it's it, it has to do with human, you know, the right. anthroposaic or whatever. Mankind is now become the changer of, of the, the environment. Uh, right. And there are more species and life disappearing from Earth now than there were 65 million years ago when the asteroid hit. And you're absolutely the well, what, yeah, why, why is Because that? of us. Because of us. Changing exactly. the environment. Yeah. Well, and yeah, that's and the core issue of, you know, they talk correct. all about climate change and all the bad things that are happening, but people, most of them, are not talking about the core issue that you just hit upon. Well, you started to talk about it. And that is the overpopulation. Of it's the uh, elephant in the, in the room. room. Exactly. Everyone is ignoring it. Yeah, yeah, there are just so what is, what is the, wait, should we stop here? <laughs> 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 and that's how you end that, okay. right there. Okay. All but right. can we come back to talk about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to continue? Well, I don't do know what the elephant hour. in the room is that you're talking Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, we, can, yeah. can yeah. we just do yeah. one more half an hour yeah. segment? Yeah. Thank you very much. So we're going to take a break now. Thank you. Peace be with you.